Hi, Rich Karuba for BowlingBall.com. If you're interested in improving, then it's good to learn how to improve your bowling skills, isn't it? Well, there's going to be a few techniques that I'm going to recommend right now that I'm very committed to. Most coaches are, and that's organize your practice sessions and use your time wisely. If you're going to bowl for an hour of practice, why not use that hour committed to five or six key components of your game and spend a, a few given moments on each one of those things so you rehearse all the components of your game that will help you make improvements. And when you get in competition, it's easier to maintain uh, good technique than it is if you never practice them with some kind of a routine. So uh, developing a good practice technique is vital. Hey, professional bowlers fight to maintain a high standard of performance, and they practice their craft frequently and religiously, but they have a detail and with purpose. They're very organized. So you can kind of easily do the same thing managing your time on the practice lane. And that will help your improvement. So during, uh, let's take an hour. Let's take a, a six things, 60 minutes, six 10-minute intervals. Maybe for the first 10 minutes, uh, uh, you might want to focus on balance, remaining in an athletic body posture, an athletic position, and all the way through to your approach. Keep your head and shoulders uh, your torso very steady from the beginning all the way through the important release of the ball and hold your form when you follow through. The less moving parts, the less chance for mistakes. It's a pretty simple process, uh, so keep your head and shoulders nice and level, your torso level. Try not to windmill or turn your shoulders open and close too much uh, beyond what you need to do to make a good effective delivery toward your target. Check your positioning. Think about your tempo and your pace. The next 10 minutes, tempo again. Uh, you want to think about the tempo or pace of your footsteps particularly. Try to avoid accelerating your steps excessively. Um, give yourself time to make that same smooth arm swing tempo each delivery, particularly the last two steps. Where bowlers are going to make a mistake is hurrying the last two steps and pushing off the step before the step, hurrying the slide, moves your body out of position, and that critical moment of release happens during your slide step, doesn't it? So you want to be very stable. You want to be very consistent in how you take that last approach don't hurry it. Now the third 10 minute interval can be used to work on your timing and your swing. Rehearsing the beginning of your swing process to sequence it slightly before you make the first step relative to a four step approach. You want to begin the swing with the first step of a five step approach is typically the strategy. Uh, and don't rush that process. Allow the downswing to begin in a shape motion as you start your swing as opposed to pushing it out and pulling it back and being herky-jerky. You want to work with a nice smooth shape swing and you want to allow enough timing uh, and have that consistent swing tempo every time you swing and release the bowling ball. Uh, shaping the beginning of the swing will allow your uh, free-flowing swing to occur to the top of the backswing in one in uninterrupted motion that is. And then uh, you want to wait on your swing from the top and allow the ball to swing freely without arm control, keeping reducing the tension in your arm until your ball reaches the releasing zone. And that's very important to try to maintain consistent tempo in the back and forward swings so you have the consistent ball uh, speed, you regulate your speed, and you can hit your target easier. Now, during your next 10-minute interval, uh, release your ball uh, at a precise relationship to your bowling shoe of your sliding leg. In other words, we don't want to release the ball one time and your hand exits the ball behind the heel of your bowling shoe and another time your hand is still on the ball as your hand passes the toe of the shoe and you start lofting the ball too far up on the approach. The moment of release, we want to regulate it. Try to let the ball come off your hand sometime between the heel of your sliding shoe and the shoelaces each and every time so you develop consistent momentum with the swing to propel your ball over the line, entering the lane at a gradual, a gradual uh, angle of descent into the surface of the lane. That's the strategy. And then finally, um, in the next 10 minute interval, practice completing your swing smoothly and make sure your bowling hand follows through in the same direction of your target on the lane. Your eyes should be focused with laser light precision on your target and your hand should follow that ball toward your target as almost you're going to grab the target. Keep your bowling elbow alignment directly behind your bowling hand on the forward swing and during the release. Don't let the elbow get wide or away from your body uh, because that will uh, help, the, that will make you turn the ball early and not produce a direction uh, swing and release toward your target. The elbow of your bowling arm should attain shoulder level or higher at the top of your follow through motion. You should be able to hold your form slightly when you practice. So for the final 10 minutes, hold your form at the foul line. Keep your eye on your target. 
watch your target. Make sure you keep hitting it or real close to it over and over and over each time. Uh, you want to make sure your eyes, keep your eyes on your target. It only takes about 2.1 seconds to 2.5 seconds for your ball to go down the lane and reach the pins if you're throwing at a good, at a, at a good ball speed uh, pace. So hold your form as long as you can, at least till it reaches the targeting arrows, and that should only take about one second. It's important to maintain good balance at the foul line, so this is a way to rehearse it in your practice sessions. And then if you have a little more time to practice, just think about making good deliveries and throwing strikes. So you wrap up each practice session and rehearse each practice session on the lanes with purpose and work on all those important components of the game. A discipline hour of practice will get you more uh, benefit than just bowling for score and goofing around and not paying attention. i got to be honest with you, I'm pretty animate about this, and I'm going to highly recommend that you give it some consideration. Hey, and if you have any more questions, just go see a coach. Get a certified coach. Find a local bowling professional, perhaps consult a pro shop to find somebody uh, and work with them. It will help you improve your game. We want to thank you for visiting us at BowlingBall.com today. Take a few moments of time to search or browse our site for some wonderful product and purchase opportunities. Uh, simply follow our easy-to-order online instructions. If you do find something you wish to purchase, our store is always open. We appreciate you being here. Thanks for visiting us at BowlingBall.com.